Amen. Psalm 100, please. And 19. Psalm 119. And we're turning, please, this morning down to verse 65. Psalm 100 and 19. And come with me, please, down to verse 65. The psalmist is speaking, <clears throat> and he says, Thou hast dealt well with thy servant, O Lord, according unto thy word. Teach me good judgment and knowledge, for I believe thy commandments. Before I was afflicted, I went astray, but now have I kept thy word. Thou art good, and doest good. Teach me thy statutes. The proud have forged a lie against me, but I will keep thy precepts with my whole heart. Their heart is as fat as grease, but I delight in thy law. It is good for me that I have been afflicted, that I might learn thy statutes. The law of thy mouth is better unto me than thousands of gold and silver. And we know that the Lord will bless, as he always does bless, the reading of his own precious truth. For the child of God... For the Christian who is saved by God's grace, for that person who's washed in the blood of the Lamb, born again of the Holy Ghost, for us Christians this morning, there are often times, perhaps, often times, when we are called to face very hard and very difficult periods in life. In fact, child of God, so difficult and so hard and perhaps so painful. Child of God can suffer painful periods in life. And sometimes, child of God, when these periods of, of difficulties and hardships come into our lives, we are often, friends, tempted to bring God under questioning, aren't we? When painful circumstances come, and stifling situations suddenly without warning comes into our lives. We can find ourselves bringing God under questioning. You see, child of God, we as the people of God this morning, we're not exempt from the struggles of life. In fact, we're more wide open to them. Would you not agree with me in that? And there's times, now I don't know about you, but there's times when these periods come, child of God. It just seems that God is so absent. It's as if God, during the difficult periods, through the distressing periods, listen to me, through the depressing periods, it seems at times God goes into hiding. And you often find yourselves, I know I do, like Job in Job 23 and verse 3, Oh, that I knew where I might find him. Times we can be searching for God and, and God just seems nowhere to be found. And maybe I'm speaking, maybe I'm describing somebody at this very moment. 
God seems so far away. Oh, that I might know where I where I knew where I might find him, that I might come even to his seat. And child of God, maybe I'm speaking to somebody, and that's this is you this morning. This is God describing you. God seems so far away. You're going through difficult periods, perhaps. Distressing times, child of God. Perhaps that you don't, maybe the person next to you or even closest to you know absolutely nothing about, oh, friend, child of God, these days has been tough. Sometimes God seems absent. Sometimes God seems silent. As when these periods come, child of God, not only God seems absent, God sometimes, oftentimes, He seems Silent. You search for answers, but boys, but there's no answer comes. And you struggle. And how often, child of God, listen, let's be honest, I have to be honest. How often, child of God, have we went crying to God in our pain? And we've went crying to God in our suffering. And we've went crying to God in our sorrow. And we've went crying to God in our loneliness. And God seems silent. And God seems to be hiding His face. And God seems to be closing His ears. And there's times, child of God, we can feel so alone. Listen, Christians can feel so alone. The psalmist in Psalm 102 verse 6 says, I am like a pelican in the wilderness. I am as a sparrow alone in the housetop, O oh, child of God. There can be periods in your life and in my life where we seem so isolated and so alone. And I'll tell you this from experience. It's not a nice place to be. Painful periods can come into the Christian's life. Where we find ourselves in the den of despair. Where we find ourselves in the prison house of perplexity. Where we find ourselves in the strongholds of sickness. And no release seems to come. Can I encourage your heart, child of God, this morning just for a wee moment? Some things comes into all of our lives so unexpectedly. Job loss, sickness, sorrow. Sometimes these things can come into our lives, child of God. And listen, as we would say in Tarun, totally out of the blue, totally unexpected. And listen, child of God, none of us here this morning knows what's going to come into any of our lives in the incoming week. But listen to me, nothing comes without God's knowing first. Before these afflictions come to our doorstep, God is there before they come. But please do, do take this to heart this morning, child of God, because this is the message God has given to me. Sometimes God himself allows these periods of afflictions to come. Sometimes God has to allow these periods of Afflictions to come. Because actually, this actually now brings me to my text. 
It actually now brings me to my text. Now listen to what the psalmist said. Psalm 119, verse 71. Here's what he says. It is good for me that I have been afflicted. I want you to notice, child of God, that the psalmist there speaks of two, of two tenses. He speaks first of all of the present tense because he says, it is good for me. And then he speaks of the past tense because it says, it is good for me that I have been afflicted. Now what's the psalmist trying to tell us? The psalmist is trying to tell us this morning, child of God, that life is so good for me now. It is good for me. Life is so good for me now. Why, David? Because of the past afflictions that I had to endure. Life is good for me now, and it's all because of the painful times of the past. David didn't say here in this text that it was good for me that I was afflicted. He says it is good. Life's good for me now. Life couldn't be any better, but it's a result of the pains of affliction that I had to pass through. It is good for me that I have been afflicted. God wants to speak to us this morning on the ministry of affliction. But nobody, nobody likes it when pastor affliction stands upon the pulpit of our lives. You see, first of all, when it comes to the ministry of affliction, there's always the pain of affliction, isn't there? You see, child of God, the pain of affliction is real. The pain of affliction, child of God, often draws us into a very dark and a very lonely place. Sometimes, child of God, the pain of affliction draws us into a very isolated place. The pain of affliction is never pleasant. And I wonder, I wonder, is there anybody here this morning and pastor affliction is ministering from the pulpit of your life? Times are tough. And behind that, smiling, behind that smiling face this morning, perhaps there's a hurting heart. And nobody, no nobody, knows the pain that you endure. The ministry of affliction is anything but pleasant. And sometimes it's uncontrollable and sometimes it can be unbearable because the dark clouds of affliction often hide his face. You know, child of God, the ministry of affliction can come in many different ways. Many terrifying ways. Many ways, child of God, that it would try the greatest of believers. Do you remember Job? Do you remember Naomi? What did Job say? Job could say, the Lord gave and the Lord hath taken away ten coffins out of the one home. 
Sometimes it can come in so different ways. Listen to Naomi. Naomi in Ruth 1, 20, 21. It, we see the severity of her affliction. It says she was bereaved of her husband and two sons. She left Bethlehem and went into Moab. She went in full, but she came back empty. She came back with her hands empty. She came back with her home empty. I tell you, she came back with her heart empty. And not only does she confess the severity of her, of her affliction, but she confesses the source of her affliction. The Almighty hath afflicted me. And sometimes, child of God, sometimes we always blame the devil. The devil may be the source, but always remember the hand of the loving God often and can afflict. David could say in Psalm 119, verse 75, he said there that thou in faithfulness hast afflicted me. The pain of affliction. I'm telling you, child of God, listen to me, it's real. But then there's the purpose of affliction. It is good for me that I was afflicted. Affliction is to do three things. It's designed to do three things. Affliction is designed to chastise. It's designed to cleanse. And it's designed to draw us closer to God. The ministry of affliction is not designed to be cruel. And child of God this morning, listen to me. If you this morning feel the heavy hand of affliction upon you at this very moment in time, listen, God's not cruel. He may seem to be cruel. What does the hymn writer say? My father's hand will never cause his child a needless tear. And there's many reasons why God brings us this morning under the ministry of affliction. You know, we could say there, Verse 67, listen to what he said in, in verse 67. Before I was afflicted, before I felt the afflicting hand of God, where were you, David? I was astray. Before I was afflicted, I was away from God. Before I was afflicted, before I was afflicted, I was so far away from God. I was so far away. And child of God, he looks back to a time when he was so far away from God. And it was before God afflicted him, but he could say now in my text, but it's good for me now that I have been afflicted. And child of God, listen to me this morning. Listen to me. Job 5, 17. Behold, happy is the man whom God correcteth. Therefore, despise not thou the affliction of the Almighty. Nobody likes it. My son, Proverbs 3, 11 and 12. Despise not the chastening of the Lord, neither be weary of his correction. For whom the Lord, listen to it, for whom the Lord loveth. 
He correcteth. Listen, we all need correction, don't we? I look back to a day when I was bitterly corrected. My mother used to have a wee sally rod, and it used to hang up behind the picture, and all she had to do was reach for that sally rod, and I become very good very quick. But there's times I got it round my legs, and you'd hardly believe it, there was a time when she used it. I danced the hind jig for about 10 minutes after it. Why did my mother use the rod? Was it because she was a spoil sport? Was it because she didn't want her wee judged of any fun? Was it because she hated me? Did she use it just for the sake of it? No, she loved me too much to let me go my own way. And listen, my mother used the rod, and I'll say this publicly, and it wasn't brutality. And it wasn't child abuse. I thank her for it. I thank her for it. Before I was afflicted, the, uh, the, the psalmist says, before I was afflicted, I had gone as a... Where would any of us be only but for the ministry of affliction? Let's be honest. No, 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 child of God. God loves us too much to allow us to do our own thing and allow us to go our own way. David's saying in this text, I'm so glad that the hand of affliction was upon me. I'm so glad that God corrected me. Where would I have been? Oh, no. But let me make one thing absolutely clear before I go any further. When tragedy hits a home, listen to me. It's not because you've sinned in any way and God's punishing you for it. Tracy was in holidays with a number of people one time, and this fellow was given wee morning devotions. He spoke up one morning and says, if a tragedy has hit your home or anybody's home, it's because sin has happened in your life and God's punishing you. You see, if I had that boy that morning, I had it done to him what my granny used to do with the chickens years ago. Only I wouldn't have went, <coughs> I had a went, <coughs> He's just an old blubber who didn't know what he was talking about. And sometimes things come into our lives, child of God, and we can't understand the hand of God. And at times like that, we just have to stand back and allow God to be God. And it's never because of our sins, but because, praise God, on the cross at Calvary that day, our sins past, our sins present, our sins future has been totally, praise God, and eternally has all been settled. Hallelujah. All under the blood. Your sins and your iniquities. I will remember no more, praise God. Oh, no, 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 no. The purpose of affliction, child of God, no. It's not to drive us away from God. The purpose of affliction is to draw us closer to God. Boys, when my mummy gave me the rod, I thought she was the worst being in the world. I wish I had somebody else for me, mummy. And half an hour I was sitting on her knee cuddling her. My, she was the best ever it was. And you know, sometimes God uses the hand of affliction, child of God, the rod of affliction to correct us. It's because He loves us. It's because He loves us. Tell me this, child of God, this morning, is life for some of you here unpleasant? And I'll tell you what David couldn't say at the time. It was good for him to be afflicted. No time of affliction is pleasant. 
Blessed is the man whom thou chasteneth, O Lord, that thou mayest give him rest from the days of adversity. And listen, child of God, God's divine rod of affliction, the purpose is not to hurt us, the purpose is to heal us, not to drive us away but to draw him to himself. David, what can you say? It's good that I have been afflicted. And child of God, listen. Perhaps for you, life at this moment is anything but good. Anything but good. No reflection is good. The pain and the purpose and the praise of affliction. The praise, oh why? There's always the praise of affliction. Hebrews 12 and verse 11. Now no chastening for the present seemeth to be joyous, but grievous. Nevertheless, afterward it yieldeth the fruit of righteousness unto them that are exercised thereby. Now listen, child of God, if you're sitting under pastor affliction this morning, listen, sit tight, please sit tight. His sermon doesn't continue forever. It's only for a period. And do you see when pastor affliction closes his ministry, do you know what you'll find? The closing hymn will be sweeter. Your faith will be stronger. Listen. It's the refiner's fire. It's the refiner's fire that brings out the purity of the gold. God said in Isaiah 48 verse 10, he says, I have chosen you. Where did he choose you? In the furnace of affliction. And when you're in the furnace of affliction, child of God, and when you're going through the ministry of affliction, do you know something? God hasn't abandoned you. Do you know what he's doing? God is watching you. God is watching you to mold and to strengthen, just to see how your faith is strengthened. God proves us, not beside the furnace, not outside the furnace. God proves us inside the furnace. David, David, be honest with us this morning. What do you say about the ministry of affliction, David? It is good for me that I was afflicted. Before I was afflicted, I had gone astray. Where are you now, David? Where are you now? I'm near to God. Near to God. And may that be our prayer that we'll be near to God in these terrible, wicked, and sinful days. The ministry of affliction, it doesn't last forever. 
It's only a period where God proves us not to bring out the worst in us, but to bring out the best. It is good for me that I was afflicted. And may the Lord bless His Word to our hearts this morning. Our closing hymn is 500. And 69, may it be our prayer this morning, near my God to thee, near to thee, even though it be a cross that raiseth me, still all my songs shall be near my God to thee, nearer to thee.